Hey everybody and welcome back to another quick tie. My name is Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Board for Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. And we want to thank uh, Western Canada Fly Fishing Guide School for sponsoring and bringing this quick tie to you tonight. What's on the docket? What are we tying? We are going to be tying up the Chimera. So if you've never heard of that, you can join the club because it's a new one for some of us. Um, but great fly pattern. Um, we're going to take you through here in just a few minutes. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. Hit that little bell icon and every time um, we have a new video come up, you're going to see it pop up in your feed and be able to watch along. Tonight I'm going to be tying out of my season six kit. This bad boy here. Okay, and this is going to be coming out of episode six. So you're going to have two different patterns in there. This one is the one that has all the black dubbing in it. If you're tying out of the um, individual kits, that's all right as well. It's going to be clearly marked and have all the materials there for you. And if you aren't tying out of veneer kits, that's totally fine as well. Just head on over to our website and you can find the full fly recipe right there and still tag along and, and learn this pattern. And you can see right below me there, that is the Chimera and that is what we'll be tying up. So let's head on over to the vise and uh, let's get started. So I'm gonna, there you go, I'll just give you a little look at this guy here. So kind of a funky little nymph. We've got uh, a few different materials gonna be working with and uh, something you don't often see is you're gonna have some of these mono eyes. This is what we're gonna be tying into this pattern as well. So a few things going on here, some hot spots, fun materials to work with, but we'll get to it. So I'll go ahead and pop that hook out of the vise and I will get my other one in. And I suggest when you put this in the vise to start with, because this is a curved um, shank hook like a caddis, um, a caddis hook, I'm gonna tip it up a little bit for tying in the eyes and then I'll readjust it for tying the rest of the pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and flick that bead out of the way so that it's, uh, it's out of the way to start with because we're not gonna be tying it in right at the start of the fly. Um, sorry, I just gotta throw on uh, my bib because my shirt is a little too exciting. Skin. Sorry, my skin. There we go. How about that? Did you steal this from the oh. hospital? <laughs> I think you might have stole this from the hospital. <laughs> All right, guys. What am I using for thread? Is I'm using some uh, brown UTC 70. Okay, this is uh, color is not super important, but if you want to go something dark, it's better. I suggest using the 70 denier um, just to leave yourself a little bit extra space when you put in more wraps on a smaller nymph like this. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start our thread just behind the eye and we're going to work it back just a little ways before we snip or cut that or uh, break that out. And the next thing we're going to go to right away is we're going to find one of those little bead eye, mono eye type situations. Very small. Okay. Um, a little bit difficult to work with. I'm going to be honest with you when you tie it in, but what kind of makes it easier, we need to leave a little bit of space. I would say one hook eye back. Um, from the eye is gonna kind of where we measure because we're gonna be tying some stuff in right at the head and we want to have a little bit of space there. So once I found that spot, then I'm gonna come in and do some cross wraps just as if this was like dumbbell eyes or bead chain eyes, no different. I'm just gonna do a couple of cross wraps in one direction and then grab this over. <laughs> and once I get a couple of cross wraps, you'll, you'll notice it stops wanting to slide around so bad but you're gonna have to work with it a little bit because they're not firm like, like dumbbell eyes. So they do want to move a little bit. But if you should be left something looking like this, you want to get them set in there. And then you can do some figure eights to really secure them in there. In whatever fashion works for you. Everybody kind of has their own um, version of what works for them when they tie in eyes like this. I just want to make sure that I get some wraps at the, at the end that go just around the eyes themselves but not the hook shank. That's going to pull all of those thread wraps together. Okay? So I like where they're at. They're secure. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that bead up with my thread right up next to those eyes. And I'm just going to hold the bead here. I could whip finish and re, um, reapply my thread behind the bead but there's no sense. We're going to cover up that work anyways. I'm just going to hold the bead in place and then pass my thread back behind the bead and put a couple wraps there and that's actually going to hold that bead right in place. So you can see you'll see one set of thread wraps go over top of it and that's it. But that'll be covered up here shortly anyways. So I'm going to work my thread back a little ways. I'm going to now reposition this. It's a little easier to tie in these tail materials. So now I'm going to tip that hook down a little ways like this. Just makes it a little bit easier to work with. I'm going to work down around. You kind of got to be careful at hook point that you don't uh, catch your thread on it, otherwise you're just gonna end up cutting it constantly. So I worked my thread down and then I brought it back up a little ways. Now you're gonna go into your kit and grab one of these feathers. This is uh, a black 
feather off of a saddle hackle. And I'm just gonna take a few of these little guys here to form my tail. So you kind of just decide how much you want, how much material you want in your tail. I'm probably taking like 10 or 12 fibers here. I'll pull them off the stem, set that feather aside. Now I'm holding on to the base of this. And now when I measure this, I want it to be under a full hook shank length. So I'm just gonna roughly go three quarters. I'm gonna pass it back to about here. I'm gonna switch my hands over. Now I'm gonna secure it starting right where I left my thread, kind of mid fly. I'm gonna go up towards the bead to secure it. And now I'm gonna start working my way back down. And now ideally I want that tail material to stay right up on top of the hook shank. So I'm kind of lifting up on it with my other fingers. And once I get to right about there, I'm just gonna let it go. And that's gonna sit down your vise nicely. Now I'm gonna come back up here, trim out the butt ends of that feather and secure that down. Now the next material that we need to go in and apply is this silver wire, okay? So this is gonna be our ribbing coming back up over the main body material. So I'm gonna come in here, tie it in just behind the bead. I'm just gonna keep it on the near side of the fly towards me, all the way down to where I left that tail material. Then I'll bring my thread back up, kind of into that mid hook portion there. And now for the body itself, we're gonna form it out of some pheasant tail. So you got this orangey red, brownish pheasant tail pieces in here. I'm gonna say, go ahead and grab like five or six of those pieces together. Generally find the tips as close as you can. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim out just the very tips so that they're all perfectly lined. I'm gonna place that just behind the bead. Gonna get some thread wraps and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna guide that all the way back to where I left my wire. And I'm gonna bring it back forward. Now once I get up here, I'm gonna throw in a little half hitch just to save my work. I'll set my bobbin aside. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just palmer my pheasant tail forward. Just to create that nice furry looking body. And the pheasant tail does such a good job of giving a really realistic looking body. So once I get up to just behind the bead, I can leave some extra space there. Don't need to go right tight. I'm gonna tie this off, so take a thread wrap behind, thread wrap in front, and repeat. Once I got that good and secure, trim that out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab that wire that I tied in, and this is gonna act as a ribbing coming back up the fly and helping secure that somewhat fragile pheasant tail. So important here is just try to keep your palmer wraps evenly spaced up the fly until you get to your thread and go ahead and tie that off. Thread wrap behind and in front. You can go ahead and snip that out or you can just helicopter it off and it'll break. Now we're gonna work on building the thorax of the fly. So this is the, the big meaty part right at the head. Um, so what we're gonna use to do that is we're gonna use some flash, some red flash is gonna kind of be the ribbing on top and we're gonna use some thin skin or some scud back, whatever you got there. So first thing is I got my, my red flash and now I wanna tie this in so that it is directly on top of the hook shank. And first off, I'm just gonna work a little bit of thread base back to form the thorax that I want there. So that's about the distance we want. Your uh, thread should be just ahead of the hook point. We're gonna come in here, tie this in, and now this is important that this is right up on top. So if, if that first time you put it on doesn't get it right where you need it, just go ahead and adjust that till it is. So you want that to be right up on top, top of the hook shank. Now we're gonna go into that thin skin. This is the black stuff here, okay. And we're gonna tie this in right up behind the bead. And what I like to do before I tie it in is I just like to come in and just cut a little point onto this. I find it makes it a little bit easier to get it centered because this stuff is kind of stiff. So I've just done that to it. And then when I come in here, same way I tied in my flash, just try to get it to go right up on top and adjust it until it does. And then we're gonna take that thread wrap back. I just kind of can lift it up and check and make sure, yeah, that's right up against that red flash. It's centered. And now I'm gonna come and basically leave my thread right behind where I tied it back into. 
Now from there, I'm gonna go to my next material, which is gonna be my dubbing. So you got a whole bunch of black dubbing in there, enough to do quite a few of these flies. Just grab yourself a little pinch of it, and we're gonna make a quick little dubbing noodle. And we want this one to be fairly tight. So as always, when we're making a dubbing noodle, remember I gotta spin my fingers in the same direction. And let's get that wound pretty tight. We will brush a little bit of this out at the end, but we do want a fairly tight wrap for when we're forming the thorax. It makes it a little easier to work around those eyes, which we're gonna do right at the very front. And this stubbing in particular is very easy to get off your thread if you have to pull some off. So I would say err on the caution of a little bit longer dubbing noodle. So first off, I'm gonna start right behind that nymph back material. Once I get up behind the bead, I'm just gonna make sure that's kind of nice and bulky looking. And then I'm gonna cross in front of the bead and do a wrap right behind. So that doesn't cover up the bottom of the bead, but it does cover up the space between. And then I'm gonna do a set of cross wraps in between those mono eyes. That's gonna fill in that space. So we should be left with something that looks like that. Okay, fills that in nicely. And now for the very end of the fly, I wanna tip this up even more again, make this a little easier to tie in the last couple of materials. And now that I'm up here at the eye, I'm gonna first fold forward the black thin skin, kind of pull it roughly pretty tight and centered on the hook. Let's go ahead and put a couple thread wraps there, lift it up, get a couple thread wraps underneath. And now I'm gonna go ahead and trim that out. And then we're just gonna repeat that process with the flash. And it's important that that flash is right centered in that black thin skin again. So it should look something like that. Fairly centered. I'll take a couple more thread wraps to secure it. And I'm gonna whip finish it right there. So grab your whip finish tool. If I can find mine, there it is. Let's whip finish it. And then we just have a couple more things to do. I'm just gonna do the one whip finish because I am gonna put some resin on it. Trim out my thread. And you can trim out that red flash. Like so. And now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my resin. And I'm gonna use some UV resin. This is just some uh, bone dry from Solar Res. And I wanna put a coating of resin just on the very top, on top of that flash, kind of securing it to that nymph back material. Not trying to make a big bubble here or anything like that. This is just to give you some durability out of that flash because kind of probably the first fish you catch is gonna, unfortunately gonna tear that. So once we got that good and cured, the last thing I wanna do is I wanna come in on the underside of this thorax with a brush, dubbing brush or Velcro, whatever you got, that will fit in there. And I'm just gonna brush this out a bit. I wanna get, make this look a little more buggy. So I need to get super crazy, but I do wanna pull out some of those fibers, just like that. Got that kind of imitation of what legs would look like on that thorax by pulling some of that out. If you got any hairs though that are hanging down past the hook point, just wanna make sure that those aren't too long. That's good. I'm gonna recenter this, it's a little more visible. And there you go guys, that is the Chimera. Very cool pattern, I suggest that you give it a try. Um, could fish, it's, it's generally a mayfly searching pattern, um, but something about that hot spot um, does something good for this fly. So give it a try. Um, there's a few different ways to tie this pattern. This is the one I prefer and uh, the one we obviously took you through tonight. So hope you guys enjoyed that fly and uh, can get a few in your box and, and give it a try this season. Okay guys, I want you to remember to like and subscribe to this video. Um, hit that bell icon so you know next week when we have a couple more flies coming out. And I wanna thank again, Western Canada Fly Fishing Guide School for sponsoring this quick tie. Again, my name is Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Bover Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying, and we can't wait to see you guys next week.